Hey everybody, Dan here with Pain For You. Another late night, another day got away from me, so I figured I'd get this done before the day got away from me completely. So today's topic is going to be, do I have to rewire my brain? I'm going to take a couple of nice breaths. I get centered before I do these videos, if you'll join me. Breathe in some peace. Exhale the noise and stress. Breathe in some strength. Exhale some weakness. Breathe in some clarity. Exhale the uncertainty. So, do we need to rewire the brain? So there's a lot of talk in this mind-body space, in the stress management, anxiety, depression, uh, certainly the TMS space, um, about rewiring the brain, right? Because the brain must be wired wrong if it's creating all this pain. And there's even programs that are literally called, you know, brain or neural retraining programs. And, uh, you know, several of them that are all about retraining the brain, retraining the brain. And many of them get very specific, very rigid, and uh, I think to a degree they get lost in the details, and it can make the whole co process seem extremely complex. Like, oh my god, in order to get better, I'm going to have to rewire my brain. How the heck do I do that? And to a lot of us, myself included, that sounds really, like challenging and hard and it's going to require a lot of time and a lot of effort and oh my god how do I do that and so do we need to rewire our brain not intentionally and what I mean by that is if you go at it with the intention of rewiring the brain how the heck do you know if you're doing it right and what wires are you rewiring what are you disconnecting? What are you connecting? I'm very much of the mindset that the body and the brain knows exactly what to do if we give it proper instructions, right? And so I don't think we need to get mirrored in the, in the technical details of exactly how to rewire the brain. I think if we give it the right instructions, the brain knows what to do and will take care of that for you. So we've talked about neuroplasticity in the past, these neural connections. And basically, whatever we focus on, and certainly focus on with intensity, the brain goes, that's important, right? And so it starts to say, well, that's important. Let me take notice of that. If you keep going back to it over and over and over again, the brain goes, wow. We better get more efficient at this. And so it starts to form those neural connections, right? I'll use the example of learning to play a musical instrument. You know, if you pick up a guitar or sit at a piano once and play, your brain's going to go, well, that was interesting. Didn't know what we were doing. But if you show up there all the time, every day or most days of the week, and start trying to figure it out, maybe getting some lessons or taking some lessons on YouTube, brain's going to start going, this seems important. Why? Repetition. And, uh, you know, with enthusiasm and excitement, you know, the brain learns a little bit quicker. And so we don't have to worry about retraining the brain. If you wanted to learn to play the piano, do you go about it from the standpoint of, all right, I want to play the piano, so let me rewire my brain to play the piano. I need to learn a foreign language, so let me rewire my brain. Do you get tied up in those, you know, physiological details when you decide I want to learn something? You know, you're in college, you need to learn algebra 2 or trigonometry or biochemistry or something. Do you go about it with the intention of saying, I'm going to rewire my brain to my science major in college? Not at all. So I don't think when we start to shift our attention to trying to heal our bodies by rewiring the brain, I think it's like we're trying to get ourselves under a microscope 
and uh, and really try to micromanage the entire process. And so again, I'm much more of the belief that the more we trust our bodies and the inherent wisdom of our bodies and our natural abilities to take care of ourselves, if we give the right instructions, let the brain worry about what it's going to do. Let the brain worry about disconnecting the pain neural pathways and reconnecting the feel-good, confident, uh, I am well neural pathways. And so overall, the general recommendation is focus on what you want and let the brain wire that stuff. And as little as possible, focus on the stuff you don't want so that you can teach the brain that these neural pathways are no longer necessary. And I think that's about as deep as we need to go into this brain retraining neural pathway, you know, rewiring process. Because again, there's nothing else in life other than this TMS world and healing ourself world where anybody even talks about brain rewiring, you know, sometimes in the self-help and personal, you know, productivity stuff, it's like, oh, let's rewire our brains. But even in that world, uh, I don't believe it's necessary or helpful to try to think about it down at the cellular level. Again, the brain knows what to do. Our physiology knows what to do. We've got this miraculous immune system, digestive system, autonomic nervous system that takes care of us despite some of the abuse that many of us, you know, put on our bodies with toxic foods, toxic personal care products, toxic chemicals, and you name it. Um, lack of exercise, all sorts of stuff, and yet somehow this miraculous body just keeps on plugging away, the heart keeps beating, the brain keeps working, and and I do recognize that we can get into crisis, and that crisis can be really a scary place to be, where you just kind of feel like I'm falling apart. And so, if you start pursuing this as a job where you have to, at the cellular level, the brain science level, I need to rewire my brain. Wow, does that sound pretty damn intimidating? It does to me. Because, you know, I'm not a scientist. I venture to say most of you aren't scientists either. And none of us have, you know, a microscope that's able to get down to that level. And we certainly don't have scalpels that are that tiny. And we're going to rewire the brain as if we're rewiring some electrical circuit somewhere with a soldering iron. You know, I, don't get lost in the details. I really don't think we need to do that. I think we really just want to focus on giving the brain the proper instructions, which is, I'm okay. All this stuff is not dangerous. It's painful. It's massively uncomfortable. It can be very scary, but it's not dangerous. And so, it's really important. And I talk a lot about you know, rule out the life-threatening. And it's critical to rule out things that are serious, medical conditions, things that can kill you, L literal diseases, cancers, excuse me, infectious disease. Um, you know, rule out the, the significant medical things. But once that's been done and you've proceeded to go through test after test after test, and the doctors are looking at you going, I don't know. Well, at the end of the day, stress-induced illness, this mind-body syndrome, this nervous system overload, if you will, and this neural circuit pain or symptoms is really, at the end of the day, it's the only thing that makes sense. And once we recognize what this neural circuit pain is, this nervous system disorder or overload is, and we recognize it, it's truly not dangerous. It's just kind of like a weird short circuiting of our central nervous system as a result of TMS, too much stress, TMT, too much thinking, TMF, too much fear, catastrophic thinking, worrisome thinking, anxious thinking, 
right? And look, fear and attention will keep it persistent. Why? Because you're using those neural pathways. If you're giving it attention, you're literally thinking about the symptoms all day long. The brain goes, ah, look, they're paying attention to this all day, every day. That must be important. Let me keep it wired, right? That's why I suggest turn down the fear with accurate information and acceptance that this is truly what's going on because the doctors have looked at everything else and nothing else makes sense except this. And so you're main job is to relax teach your brain teach not heal teach your brain that you're okay and guess what the brain's going to do it's going to rewire it all on its own without you having to proactively think about these neural pathways or cellular connections and how to snip the old ones and solder iron the new ones we don't have to get lost in those details and please don't i don't think it's necessary we don't do it in any other area of our life. We just kind of proceed with, okay, there's something I want to learn. I want to teach myself something. And in this case, we're essentially saying we're teaching ourselves to calm down the brain, the thinking, right? Because that's the start of it. We experience our life through our thinking. So if we can calm down the thinking and not buy into and... Uh, you know, believe all of these fearful, anxious, catastrophic thoughts that we have. And we can learn to soothe our body with breathing, meditation, yoga, nature. We're sitting quietly inside. Somebody pointed that out. They were like, hey, Dan, some of us live in cities. And the peaceful place is inside, not the chaos of outside. So I get that. Just to the lady who pointed that out, recognize that. Not everybody likes to be or is able to be outside in, in the peaceful nature like I'm blessed to have out my back door. So, what do you guys think about this? Does this make sense? Because I'll tell you what, for me, if I had to think about rewiring my brain and being able to figure out how to rewire my brain, that sounds really difficult and really complex and really overwhelming. The brain, the body, our physiology knows exactly what to do when we give it the right instructions. And in my opinion, the right instructions are relax. You're not broken. There's nothing physically wrong. The symptoms, while they're uncomfortable, they're not dangerous. So the less fear we pour on this fire, the less focus we put on it, the quicker the fire is going to burn out, the nervous system is going to settle down, and we can get well. So don't get don't get mirrored in the details. Don't get lost in them. So I don't think that's helpful. It just overcomplicates something that, frankly, isn't that complex, and isn't that I'll say it isn't that difficult. It's it's simple, but it is challenging, and it's challenging because these symptoms can kick our ass hard and really freak us the heck out. So don't freak out. Calm your fears. The brain will take care of the rest. Once you give it the right information that you're not broken, consistent messages of safety that you're okay, you will be okay. It's a rough patch. This is not forever, you know. And you can quickly work yourself out of a crisis and start noticing that through this calm, reassuring approach towards yourself, you can influence, not control, but influence the severity of the symptoms. And when you start to see how being more calm and not as, not as crazy in our thinking, how you can influence the symptoms, you gain a little bit of confidence a little bit of hope. And, and it starts actually being fascinating and fun and interesting to go, wow, look at that. I just influenced my symptoms. They came down simply by the way I chose to respond to the symptoms. Look at that. When you turn down the fear, you shift your attention to something else, even if it's just a TV show. Boy, I'll tell you what, 
brain gets a message pretty quickly. Indifference is super powerful. And again, let's let the brain and the nervous system and the physiology of our bodies handle itself. You know, we really don't have to muck around in it and try to figure it out. It's too complicated. So, love you guys and gals. Have a fantastic Sunday. And uh, I will see you tomorrow, Monday. Take care.